Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to learn about connected vertices and connected graphs. So let's start with connected vertices first. Now in a graph, two vertices will be called connected vertices if we can find a connection between them. Now in graph theory by connection we mean the existence of path. So two vertices suppose u and v in a graph will be called connected vertices if you can find a path existing between those two vertices. That is there is a way to travel from one vertex to the other by traversing the edges present in the graph. So here goes the definition of connected vertices. Let's see with the help of some examples. So here you can see in the graph G if I talk about the vertices U and W. You can see here there is a path from U to W for example this one. There is also another path from U to W following this route or you can have other paths also. Existence of at least one path between the vertices will make them connected. So definitely since I am having path between the two vertices U and W so I can say U and W are connected vertices. Similarly you can see the vertices X and V or V and W or U and X or U and V every pair of these vertices are connected to each other because there exist path between those pairs of vertices. Let's come to this particular graph here if I talk about the vertices say A and G. Now you can go from A to G from this vertex to this vertex through the path A, C, D, E, F, G. There is other path also. So existence of a path between the two vertices means the vertices are connected. If I talk about the vertices C and I, I have path between these two vertices so they are connected. Between E and H they are also connected because I can find path between those two vertices also. Now come to this particular graph. Here if I talk about the vertices X and Z. Now from X to Z you can travel from X to U, U to Z. So that will create a path between the two vertices XZ which means XZ are connected vertices. Now what about the vertices Y and W? Now in this graph no way you can travel from the vertex Y to the vertex W by traversing edges of the graph because there is no path between these two vertices. That means these two vertices are not connected vertices or disconnected vertices because you don't have any path between them. Basically you could have drawn this graph in this manner and it would be more clear to you why the vertices are not connected. See this is U, X, Z, W, this is V, Y. Basically this portion of the graph is not attached to the remaining portion. You could have separated it out. So this is the graph basically and you can clearly see there is no path existing between X and V or U and Y or Z and V. So these are some disconnected pairs of vertices. Now in this context let us talk about connected graph. Now when is a graph said to be connected itself? So a graph is said to be a connected graph when every pair of vertices present in the graph are connected vertices. That is you pick any two vertices from the graph you will see there is a path between them. So if every pair of vertices in the graph are connected vertices then we say that the graph is itself a connected graph. So here goes the definition of connected graph that a graph is connected if there is a path between every pair of vertices. So you have to take care that every pair you pick there is a path. For example in this graph if you observe carefully the vertices u, v you will find there is a path between them so they are connected vertices. Similarly if you think about the vertices u, w or u, x or v, w or Vx or Wx any pair of vertices you pick from this graph you can see there is a path between them at least one path between them hence every pair of vertices are connected here that makes this graph connected graph. Here we are given four examples of connected graphs you can observe it yourself that for each of these graphs you will find for example come to this graph you can find every pair of vertices here are connected there is a path between every pair of vertices there is a way to travel from every vertex to every other vertex in the graph through a path that indicates this graph is connected. All these four graphs in this slide are connected graphs. Now let's have a brief discussion on the comparison between adjacent vertices and connected vertices because there happens to be some confusion between these two concepts. So let's talk about the distinction clearly. Both these terms adjacent vertices and connected vertices have been discussed now. So adjacent vertices are basically a pair of vertices between which there exists a direct edge. So for example here A and E these vertices I can call them adjacent vertices. Why? 
because there is direct edge between them. Now for vertices to be connected, presence of direct edge is not mandatory. You can have a path between those two vertices, a way to travel. So in that sense, if a pair of vertices are adjacent, definitely they are connected also through that direct edge. But a pair of connected vertices do not always indicate that they will be adjacent also. For example, in this graph, you will find, suppose I am talking about the vertices A and E. Now, between these two vertices, there is a direct edge. That means A and E are adjacent vertices. Are they connected vertices? Definitely they are connected because there is a path between the two vertices A and E and the edge itself is the path. So, A and E definitely are connected. Now, if I talk about the vertices, suppose B and D. Now, B and D are not adjacent vertices because there is no direct edge between these two vertices. There is no direct edge between B and D. This edge is not present in the graph. So, they are not adjacent vertices. But what about connectedness? B and D are connected vertices because there is a path between them. I can reach from B to D. So, B and D are connected vertices. So, remember adjacent vertices are always connected but connected vertices need not be adjacent always. Now, since we have learnt about connected graphs, let us discuss what do we mean by disconnected graphs. Definitely the term itself indicates that a graph which is not connected will be called disconnected. If we define disconnected graph, it is basically a graph in which there exists at least one pair of vertices which are not connected to each other. That is there is at least one pair of vertices between which there does not exist a path in the graph. So here goes the definition of disconnected graph which is defined as a graph in which there exists a pair of distinct vertices u and v such that there does not exist any uv path in the graph. For example, this graph which we have earlier discussed also. This graph is disconnected because I know there is no path that does not exist any path between the vertices x and v. You can give the instance of any such pair of vertices between which you are not finding a path and that will give you a justification to call the graph disconnected. So here I could have picked the vertices uy also or zv also or wy also. These are some pairs of vertices in the graph which are not connected vertices which do not have path between them. So I can pick any such pair and that would be enough for me to be a reason to call the graph disconnected. So this graph is a disconnected graph. Here we have certain examples of disconnected graphs. For example, in G1 you can see there is no path between the vertices say B and H or between C and G or between A and F or between D and H. So many pairs are there. Pick any one pair and say the graph is disconnected. In the second graph G2, there is no path between U and X. So this is disconnected graph. In graph G3, there is no path between any pair of vertices. So you can pick any pair, suppose U and W. There is no path, so it is disconnected graph. In G4, there is no path between the vertices say D and A, so it is disconnected graph. Now whenever we are dealing with disconnected graphs, the term component comes into picture, which is also termed as maximal connected subgraph. First, let us go through the example and have an idea, then we will go through the definition of maximal connected subgraph. You have already learned about subgraph. You have learnt about connected graph now and you have learnt about maximal concept also. Now keep in mind all these concepts, all these definitions and bring them together and try to visualize the term maximal connected subgraph of a graph. So for example here if I take the subgraph of this graph, subgraph means a portion of the graph itself. Suppose I am taking B, C, D. So definitely H1 is a subgraph of G, it is a portion of the graph only. And H1 is a connected graph because in H1 every pair of vertices are connected and therefore it is connected graph. So this makes H1 a connected subgraph of G. Now is it maximal or not? A connected subgraph of a graph will be called maximal if it is not contained in any other larger connected subgraph or it will be called maximal connected subgraph when it is not a subgraph of any larger connected subgraph. Here H1 is a subgraph of this connected subgraph. H2 is also connected subgraph of G because it is a subgraph and it is connected. And I can see H1 itself is a subgraph of H2. That means H1 is not maximal because H1 is contained in another connected subgraph H2. 
Now, if you talk about H2, H2 is not a subgraph of any larger connected subgraph of the graph. That makes H2 a maximal connected subgraph. Okay. In the simplest sense, you just remember whenever you are dealing with disconnected graphs, you are having pieces of the graph. At least two pieces are there scattered. Okay. Every piece is a maximal connected subgraph or component of the graph. For example, here I can see this is a maximal connected subgraph because it is a subgraph which is connected graph and it is not contained in any larger connected subgraph. This is a maximal connected subgraph. This is a maximal connected subgraph. See pieces of the graph scattered. Each piece can be called maximal connected subgraph or in a more popular term we call it component. So this graph G has three components. It will be more clear with the help of the later examples. Here the graph G1 has two components. See two maximal connected subgraphs. So there are two components. So here goes the definition of maximal connected subgraph or component of a graph. In this slide the graph that we are dealing with G has two components. This C5 is one component and the other C5 is the other component. So there are two components or two maximal connected subgraphs. Here we are given two graphs. See the first graph G1 is a disconnected graph because there is no path between the vertices C and H for example. And how many components does it have? One, two, three. So there are three components in G1. Definitely it is a disconnected graph. What about G2? Here you can see in G2 every pair of vertices are connected to each other. So G2 is connected graph. Now when a graph is connected, how many components will it have? Only one single component. So remember every connected graph has only one component and every disconnected graph has at least two components. Here G1 is a connected graph because every pair of vertices are connected. There is a path between every pair of vertices. G2 is a disconnected graph because there is no path between the vertices suppose C and D and therefore it is disconnected with two components here 1 and 2. Here the connected graph G1 has only one component. Here the graph G1 has two components. It is a disconnected graph. There is no path between the vertices U and W for example. G2 is also a disconnected graph as there is no path between the vertices A and B for example. And the number of components in G2 are 3. See carefully observe and determine the number of components. G3 has 5 components. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So G3 is a disconnected graph with 5 components. Now there are some points for you to remember. First one is a connected graph always has one component only. A disconnected graph has at least two components. It may be more than that also. Every isolated graph is a component and we call it a trivial component. So for example here in G1 U is a trivial component. In G2 A and C. These are trivial components. In G3 there are 5 trivial components. So basically every isolated vertex having degree 0 itself is a component and it is called the trivial component. Every complete graph Kn is a connected graph, one component. Every complete bipartite graph Kmn is connected graph, one component. Now what about any bipartite graph? Now every bipartite graph need not be connected. We can have disconnected bipartite graphs also. For example, if I talk about this graph, it is a bipartite graph and it is disconnected graph because there is no path between the vertices u and y. So a bipartite graph need not be connected always. But if you are talking about complete bipartite graph, in that case Kmn is always a connected graph. Okay. Now if you are dealing with disconnected bipartite graphs, for example this one G, you will find for disconnected bipartite graphs, you will have more than one bipartition. For example, here I can have one partite set as xy and the other partite set as uvw as I have drawn. Now the same graph I could have drawn like this uvx. It's the same graph, I have just changed the orientation. So in that case, my partite sets would be uvy and the other partite set would be xw. See? The two bipartition, bipartition 1 and bipartition 2 are different. The bipartite sets are different in the two cases. So for a disconnected bipartite graph, you can have multiple bipartitions. Okay. 
So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. If you have any queries or suggestions, please do write in the comment section below. And if you love learning with me, then please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. I am going to meet you again soon with some new topic. Till then, thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye.